In the winter of 1967, a psychology professor named James Bedford embarked on a journey unlike any other. The world was on the cusp of a technological revolution, and deep in the heart of that whirlwind of change, a new concept was taking form. A concept that would challenge our understanding of life and death, of time and space. That concept was cryonics. Cryonics, the science of using ultra-cold temperatures to preserve human life with the hope of future revival, was still a fledgling idea. It was a concept that pushed the boundaries of science, daring to ponder the possibilities of immortality. At the forefront of this groundbreaking exploration was James Bedford, a man whose curiosity and courage would chart a new course in scientific history. Bedford wasn't just a scholar, he was a visionary. When the concept of cryonics was introduced, it was met with skepticism and even ridicule. But Bedford saw beyond the skepticism. He saw potential, the potential to conquer the unconquerable, to defy the finality of death. And so, driven by a spirit of exploration and a thirst for knowledge, he made a decision that would not only change his life, but also shape the future of cryonics. Bedford decided to be frozen. He chose to surrender his body to the icy grasp of the unknown, to be suspended in time, waiting for a future where science might unlock the secrets of life and death and bring him back from his icy slumber. It was a decision that stunned the world, a decision that was as awe-inspiring as it was terrifying. This decision, however, was not an end. It was a beginning, the start of a journey that would span decades, crossing the boundaries of the imaginable, delving into the realms of the fantastic. Bedford's decision was not the end, rather the beginning of his intriguing journey. A journey that would lead us to question what we know about life, death, and the very fabric of our existence. It marked the dawn of cryonics, a dawn that promised a future filled with endless possibilities. Bedford's body was prepared meticulously for the process, a process that was as novel as it was complex. The first step in cryonics, the science of using extremely low temperatures to preserve a human body, is to prepare the body. Upon legal death, the body is placed in an ice bath to cool it down and slow metabolic processes. This is followed by a process called perfusion, where the blood is replaced with a cryoprotectant solution, essentially antifreeze for human cells. This solution prevents the formation of ice crystals that could otherwise damage the cells. Now you must be wondering, how does freezing work? Well, let's break it down. At a very basic level, temperature is a measure of how much atoms and molecules are moving. The colder something is, the slower its atoms and molecules move. By freezing the body, the hope is to halt the processes that would lead to cell death, preserving the body until a time when medical technology might be able to restore life. The actual freezing process in cryonics is a slow one. The body, now filled with cryoprotectant, is placed in a container called a cryostat. This container is then filled with liquid nitrogen, which has a temperature of negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. The body is cooled at a rate of one degree Celsius per hour to prevent thermal shock. The goal of this meticulous process is vitrification. Vitrification is the transformation of the body into a glass-like state rather than a frozen crystalline one. This is crucial because ice crystals can cause physical damage to the cells, whereas a vitrified state is smooth and causes no harm. And thus, Bedford was frozen, suspended in time, waiting for a future we can only imagine. The science of cryonics, although complex, is rooted in a fundamental question. Can the end of life as we know it be just a pause rather than a full stop? For Bedford and those who followed his path, the hope lies in a future where the answer is a resounding yes. Over a decade later, in 1979, Bedford's frozen body faced a challenge, a hiccup in the grand experiment, if you will. The storage unit, a vessel of hope safeguarding Bedford's body, faltered. An issue of isolation rose its ugly head, threatening to compromise the integrity of the preservation process. You see, the essence of cryonics is in maintaining the body at ultra-low temperatures to halt all biological functions. It's a delicate balance, a dance between life and death, where the slightest misstep could lead to irreversible damage. The isolation problem in the storage unit was such a misstep, a potential catastrophe that could have ended Bedford's journey prematurely. A quiet alarm rang through the corridors of the Cryonics Institute. 
The team sprang into action, embarking on a rescue operation that was as much about saving Bedford's body as it was about preserving the credibility of cryonics itself. Every minute counted, every second was a ticking time bomb. The pressure was immense, but the resolve of the team was stronger. This wasn't just about correcting a technical glitch. It was about addressing an existential question. Could we really cheat death? Could we, as humans, overcome our most primal fear and extend the boundaries of life itself? The gravity of these questions fueled the team's determination. They worked tirelessly, navigating the labyrinth of cryonics with a single-minded focus to save Bedford's body. The importance of maintaining the right conditions for cryonics cannot be overstated. It's not just about freezing the body, it's about preserving it in a state where future reanimation is possible. This was the promise made to Bedford, and in that critical moment in 1979, it was a promise that hung in the balance. Despite the odds, Bedford's body was rescued, a testament to the dedication and resilience of those who believe in the potential of cryonics. It was a victory, not just for Bedford and the team at the Cryonics Institute, but for humanity's relentless pursuit of immortality. It was a confirmation that even in the face of adversity, the quest for life beyond life continues. Dr. James Bedford, the first person to be cryogenically frozen, left behind a legacy that continues to inspire. Bedford's groundbreaking decision in 1967 to be preserved in a frozen state has had a profound influence on the field of cryonics. At the time, his decision was met with skepticism and incredulity. Yet in the face of adversity, Bedford's unwavering belief in scientific progress became a catalyst for a new era of exploration. Since Bedford's pioneering plunge into the unknown, the field of cryonics has grown exponentially. From a single individual's daring leap of faith, thousands have now chosen to follow in Bedford's footsteps, hoping that future technology may one day grant them a second chance at life. In the decades following Bedford's cryopreservation, advancements in the field have been monumental. Techniques for cooling and preserving the human body have improved significantly, reducing the risk of damage to the cells and tissues. As a result, the potential for successful reanimation has increased. The current state of cryonics is more promising than ever. Researchers are continuously pushing the boundaries of what is possible, exploring new methods of preservation and reanimation. The dream of a future where death is not the end, but merely a pause, is closer than it has ever been. But Bedford's legacy extends beyond the technical advancements in the field. His decision sparked a revolution in the way we think about life, death, and the potential for immortality. It challenged the conventional wisdom of his time and continues to challenge ours. It has inspired countless individuals to question the inevitability of death and to dream of a future where life can be extended indefinitely. Bedford's frozen journey remains a beacon of hope for those who dream of a future beyond their time. His legacy is a testament to the power of scientific curiosity and the human spirit's unyielding desire to push beyond the boundaries of the known. It serves as a reminder that our understanding of life and death is ever-evolving and that the future holds possibilities we can scarcely imagine. Bedford's frozen journey remains a beacon of hope for those who dream of a future beyond their time. Now let us ponder, what does Bedford's decision mean for us, for humanity? James Bedford's decision to be cryogenically frozen wasn't just a personal choice. It was a symbol, a beacon of hope, and a challenge to our traditional perceptions of life and death. It ignited a spark that continues to fuel the flames of scientific curiosity and exploration even today. From a philosophical perspective, Bedford's decision prompts us to question the very nature of our existence. It forces us to confront our mortality and the transient nature of life as we know it. It asks us to consider, is there more to life than our current understanding allows? Is it possible to extend our existence beyond the confines of our biological limitations? Ethically, this decision opens up a Pandora's box of considerations. Is it right to disrupt the natural cycle of life and death? Do we have the moral authority to decide when and indeed if we should die? And who gets to make these monumental decisions? These are questions that society must grapple with 
as we venture further into the realm of cryonics. Scientifically, Bedford's decision is nothing short of revolutionary. It has paved the way for further research and development in the field of cryonics. It has given scientists a tangible goal to work towards the successful reanimation of a human being. This opens up a world of possibilities in medical science, from the potential to cure currently incurable diseases to the possibility of extending human life. The decision to freeze Bedford has implications far beyond his own life. It has the potential to change the way we approach medicine, healthcare, and even our understanding of the human body. It could redefine our notions of life and death and challenge our perception of what it means to be human. As we continue to explore the boundaries of life and death, Bedford's decision reminds us of the infinite possibilities that lie ahead frozen in time, yet brimming with potential.